Hey guys, the Gamer Untamed. Guess what? I'm finally doing a review for Tomb Raider. It's been so long overdue, and I apologize. I'm sorry, but I keep I keep getting caught up in playing Guild Wars 2 for some bizarre reason. Like I feel like I have to play it. Like it's necessary, even though it's not. I don't know, but I'm finally doing my Tomb Raider review, and I hope you like it. Mm. So, oh, by the way, I went to that gaming convention thing. It was so boring. I, it wasn't boring. It wasn't boring for me because my friends were there and um, I was meeting people there. So aside from that, but the actual like gaming setup stuff was so boring. Although the prizes were super cool, and my friends they were they did a competition. They came second, so they got this like huge. Dota 2 mouse pad like it was this big and mouse pads aren't this big they're like this big not this big it was so weird um but yeah the actual gaming stuff itself was so boring I don't I don't know and then at the end of that um people actually got to go away with some of those gaming stuff and I'm like I wouldn't even want that huh yeah um, so I'm just going to continue with the Tomb Raider review because that was what happened and super nervous this weekend, so that should be fun. Yay! Okay, let's just do the review because let's just, let's just go at it. Tomb Raider has been rehashed and now Crystal Dynamics, the company, has <clears throat> taken a fresh new start on the Tomb Raider franchise. Thank God. Because if you look at pictures from Lara back then and Lara now, whew, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay, so the legendary Lara Croft is back. And you know what? To be honest, I was insanely skeptical about this new game. As previous games in the series, I definitely was not a fan of. This specifically because the storyline was the storylines were boring. Sorry, but they were. The puzzles were obviously... The puzzles were good, but... Lara Croft herself, she was uninteresting, and it was... A boring chore to even look at. Um, however, my friend convinced me... To... Um, get this game. So, thank you. He also he has a YouTube channel, which I think you should check out. I promised to do this for him a while ago. Uh, put his name below. It's Kind Matt something 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 and he does minecraft minecraft ma minecraft minecraft maps a lot about tomb raider so he's like tomb raider obsessed but i just think he's obsessed with lara croft i just think he has a little thing for her i don't know but he's nuts but you should check him out because he has he does really cool minecraft maps so if you're interested in minecraft definitely check him out and i also put his name in the description below for you to check out his channel and subscribe to him because he's a friend. Like legit real life friend, so you know. It's the whole specialist thing there. Okay, so the game itself is an action adventure title and this Tomb Raider 2013 is set on an island called Yamatai, where Lara Croft must save her friends from and as wait, save her friends and escape the island while being hunted down, hunt down, by a malevolent cult. So basically, these people, they don't even, I mean, it's really a bit weird that they're specifically targeting them for no particular reason. Okay then, if you like. Um, okay, I have never played any of the Tomb, Ra Tomb Raider games, Lara Croft games, whatever you call them, okay? Um, but I do know that they didn't look very nice. But I have to admit, this game looked phenomenal. And the, on the other games, the, cr the critiques they got wasn't the best reviews or the greatest criticisms that the games could have had. And they could have been so much better. So I was... In the end, I got super excited about this game, and I really, really liked it. In this Tomb Raider game, though, it's more focusing on Lara's survival on the island, rather than the puzzles that you can do in the tombs. Because in this game, I really felt like, okay, this is what it, it was like, um, 
the tombs and the puzzles in the tombs were sort of got giving off a okay let's hurry up and get back to surviving on the island type feel like they didn't really want you to spend much time in there so it, I, I think it was a wise decision to move away from all the intense puzzles and keep on the survival journey so you're like adventuring and climbing stuff that was fun I liked climbing stuff um, but yeah, it took a it took a different turn, which I think was a definitely much approved idea by the developers and by the people who made this game. I played this game on the PS3 because I always decide that when I am not too sure about a game, or it is if it's aside from it, if it's a specifically PS3 exclusive, I will play it on PS3 if I'm not if I if I know. Huh. If I'm not sure about a game, I'll play it on PS3, but if I know that I'm going to love it and it's a series that I'd like to play or it's a game that I'm super excited about, I'll play it on PC because I know that I can play PC very well and PS3 is like, what the fudge do I do right now? So, um, yeah. But I was surprised at how easy it actually was to play this game on PS3. I never died. I only died when I couldn't read the little icons on the screen because for some reason it on my TV, it's kind of like, it's all like fuzzy when they come up with like little words and icons. I played on normal, as per usual, I always play on normal. Um, but the game was really easy. It was like, as meant for console easy. Like it was supposed to be played on console on the PS3 because it just felt so connected. And it was like, why? Did I, I just zoomed out and weird and fuzzified. It's not a word. But it, it was just like, e. the gameplay was fluid and it wasn't, how should I say this? It wasn't um, tense. It wasn't like hack and, obviously not hack and slash because it's not that, I like that. But it was like really quick and really fast and you could move around very easily using the console. Um, also, I really actually enjoyed the quick time events that were a, a, a lot featured in this game and I like live for quick time events now because ever since Heavy Rain which was a completely a quick time events based game Tomb Raider is easy quick time events and my friend he cannot do quick time events to save his life so it's pretty funny um, but yeah I really liked it and since, especially since I wasn't particularly good at shooting the wolves with my arrows because I can't, I can't aim to save myself, but the auto aim was very good, especially when the people were on the wolves, it was a bit harder. So I lived for the quick time events when you've got that moment where you got to go, like you've got to shake it, you've got to shake the, um, the left thingy. I don't know what they're called. Um, but I lived for those quick time events because they like made you so intense as at the same time as it making it easy for myself. The world of the island Yamatai looks beautiful. And I mean it looks gorgeous. I cannot express how much I wanted to just stop. Especially at the start when you're like walking along the cliff. I just wanted to stop and marvel at how amazing the graphics look in this game. As well as the way Lara interacts with her surroundings. She gets like scared in tight spaces and it, and it kind of shakes the screen so that even makes the graphics intensify even more. Um, she will also emphasize on the way she feels when encountering new places. It's just like, ah, oh, whoa, like sort of like that. But the graphics look amazing. The textures, there's like no texture pop in. The textures are like, you can see the bloody grass misty stuff. You can see the rain dripping down things you can see it all so clearly and even on my tv when like it's bad graphics on my tv it looks stunning that was cool um but yeah like i just wanted to stop and just watch like the even the rain just drip down and even the sounds like you could just hear it dripping and the fire crackling it was just like this is cool it's like i'm right here oh. Oh. Okay, so speaking of Lara, she has been made a far more realistic character in this game, which is so much better because she is not a kick-ass kung fu master and this is a prequel. 
this is when Lara does not know anything about adventuring. She does not know anything. She just knows that she's going out here. She's got minimal amounts of training to find a tomb of something of Yamatai. And then she just, that just goes down the wind, that just goes down the drain in the end. Um, she has been made not to be a kung fu master or a kick-ass com combat guru because she can't. She is only human and she's not the strongest person alive. So it's realistic, like you can feel her pain when she gets hit. There's, if you do die, like, the cutscenes for when you die are so morbid because... Because of the fact that she doesn't know how to escape those situations. Like, for example, then this isn't spoilers. A pole might go through might go through here and come out here. And then she's like gasping for air. And it's just like you you can see that, like the fear and the pain in her eyes as you like watch her go through this tor torment as she's walking around the island, not knowing what to do. Like there's people who want to kill her, and she's like panicking. Every step of the way. I mean, she has her walkie-talkie, but she can only go so far with that. She's on her own. She's not with anybody else that can help her. Um, she's fragile in this game. She's a petite little fragile girl that will cry at any amount of pain. And, the, and as the player, you can really feel that as you watch Lara. She has intense emotions, especially when it's in the first part of the game when she has to kill a deer. She can, you can tell how she really doesn't want to, want to do that and you can hear the ripping of the skin when she's like trying to get the meat. Oh, it was terrible, but like you feel that. You feel the way she feels. The, the, the developers make you feel that way about the characters and that's so important in a game that has like these sort of, not as much, but little kind of morals to, them, to it. Um, yeah, it really takes a toll on Lara. Um, you can actually see just how terrifying it would be to be stuck in that kind of situation for that long amount of time when you have to climb up rocks, not knowing if you're going to miss a ledge, if you're going to get mauled to death by a wolf, or shot by a, a cult that's trying to hurt you for some bizarre reason we don't know. So let's explain my likes and dislikes about, this, about the game. So let's start with what I liked about it. Um... The bow is amazing, like, it was even more powerful than the guns. Seriously, I could kill someone with the bow and arrow in, like, two shots, and with a gun, it'd be like, boom, 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 boom. Why, why is that? I mean, it's a bow. It's not going to do much, but apparently it does. Um, the character's voice is well executed. I like her little sort of British accent. I like her little British accent that's in there. Um, her new personality, Lara's personality. Um, the beautiful world itself the realism of everything, and the gameplay. I don't really take much notice of the other characters because they're barely featured. You only really see them when they have little recordings that go back. They're like little cutscene parts and they have they show you like a little camera recording of what Lara or someone was filming of her um, other mates on the crew, on the ship that she was on. So, um... That's like the only time you really see the other characters in the game. That was weird. But I did like the other characters as well. Um, the bad. That wasn't much bad, but there was one huge thing that really kind of just plummeted down for me. Okay, um, one number, one, number one is um, why do we have these relics? Okay, we might learn a little bit about the island, but it's really un- I'm sorry, but it didn't interest me at all. They're relics. What are they going to do to help you? I don't know. There's just some backstory information on the island that, to be honest, I really didn't care about. At all. Because, number two, the storyline was pretty straightforward and was kind of boring. It was. I mean, if you liked it, go ahead, but I didn't really like it. It was pretty boring to me. So, mm. yeah, so that's why those those two intertwine there. Because why the relics? The story's boring to me. Like, it wasn't, it's not the most boring story I've ever heard. 
but it was kind of boring and it did at times leave me uninterested. Even with this entire game being really, really good, the characters are interesting, the storyline is a good storyline, the gameplay is good, the world is beautiful, and the sounds and the audio and the realism of everything, I just, even though that's so good, I just couldn't personally bring myself to really enjoy this game. I didn't feel like it was the best game. Even though all this information, all this really good stuff that happened in it was really good, for some reason, I just don't like it. I don't. I don't know why. I feel like I'm like the only person who doesn't like this game. I don't know why I don't like it. There's like a whole bunch of really good everything in there. But something just, I don't know what it is, but I found the storyline boring. I was uninterested. I just wanted to hurry, to, I wanted to hurry up and finish this game because it was bugging me. I don't know why. I really liked it, but I just didn't want to play it anymore. So I, people say they want to go back and play it again. I'm thinking, no, sit in my shelf. I'm not touching you ever again. I'm sorry, but I, I do that actually with a lot of games. I did that with... Um, um, Kingdoms of Amalur did not want to play that game ever again. Um, I never touched Borderlands again. Never touched touch Far Cry again. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to touch Bioshock again, even though that was a fantastic game and I loved it. But I don't, I don't want to play it again. I don't know why. Everything was everything I adore about this game, but I just don't like it that much. I don't know how. I feel like I'm nuts or something. Like there's something wrong in my head that I, I should be liking it, but for some reason my brain says no. Don't. You're not allowed to. I don't know. Even so, for this game, I am going to give it a whoa, 8 out of 10 because it was fantastic. The game itself was fantastic, and anyone who is like skeptical thinking about playing this game needs to buy this game. It's a must-own game. It's jumped so high for me after all the rest of the stupid Tomb Raider games that were out there before. Even if I don't really, I didn't connect with it that much. I, I don't know why. It's a own game that you must buy. I, I, I don't know why I didn't connect with it, but everything that I've told you, all the likes that I liked about it, Gives it an 8 out of 10 score. So, you should buy this game. No matter what I say about myself not liking it, because pff, I'm weird. But it's a good game. You need to purchase it. And yeah. So, I hope you liked my Tomb Raider review. I thought about it a lot, because I'm still not sure why I don't like it. Um, Please like this video. Give it a share if you like it. Um, Do comment in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel because that would be amazing and that would be lovely. So now I'm actually stuck for what video I do after this. Hmm. I'll have to do something and think of something to talk about because that's boring. Maybe I'll do a vlog. Maybe. Maybe I'll do a different type of video, sort of a vlog type video, but a questiony video. I don't know. I'll think about it. And. Yeah, so I will see you next time, next week maybe, or late this week. Yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Actually, no, I'll give you an update about Supernova. <laughs> I'll probably film some. Show my photos and stuff. I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a great day and enjoy yourself. Be well, be safe and a whole lot of other crap. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.